All right. Uh, hi, I'm Richard. Um, I work with Blueprint Free Speech, and we'll talk to you today about Ricochet Refresh. Um, so first of all, what is Ricochet to begin with? So uh, Ricochet is a kind of a decentralized instant messaging uh, client built off of the Tor and Tor network and specifically Tor hidden services. Um, so basically how it works is that whenever you launch Ricochet, you create a Tor hidden service and that gives you onion URL looking identifier, which you can share with your friends offline. Um, and then once they have that, they can launch their own instance of Ricochet, create their own hidden service and put your name in and you can do a little handshake. And this basically allows you to chat anonymously and with no metadata you know, whatsoever. The only people who know about you and who you're talking to are the, particip the participants. Um, but Ricochet has got some problems. Um, first of all, it's very unmaintained. The last uh, update was from like, November 2016. Um, it's reliant on the now deprecated V2 onion services, um, which um, others have already talked about um, previously. Um, so what this basically means is that Ricochet will stop working in, sometime in 2021 once V2 is phased out and none of the Tor relays on the network understand what V2 is anymore. Um, initially, it's a bit minimal. Um, you can have contacts and chat with them, which granted for some people is all you need, but you know we live in the 21st century now and we like to do other things with our chat program sometimes. Um, and for the nerds out there, uh, it doesn't build reproducibly, uh, which means you've got you know, no real guarantee that a a, that the binary that anybody publishes of Ricochet um, was built from the same source code that everybody else is building it from. Um, and additionally, again, it's more nerd stuff. It can't, it can't be embedded. You know, if I want to make some kind of, I don't know, Instagram clone or, or something as based off of, you know, um, anonymous chatting, uh, you, you, know, you basically have to go and build all that yourself. Whereas it'd be great if you could just, you know, import a library that facilitates, you know, uh, anonymous um, chat like behavior and build on top of that. So enter Ricochet Refresh. Uh, Ricochet Refresh is being maintained by the Blueprint Free Speech Organization. It's an international org dedicated to the freedom of expression and supporting it by free software research, outreach and advocacy. Um, you can find out more about them. Um, well, us, they're paying me. It's pretty good. Um, at blueprint for free, blueprint for free speech .net. Um, and they currently have up on their website, well, on Ricochet Refresh's website, um, an up-to-date version of Ricochet with V2 onions with various like little tweaks and security updates, um, and also um, alpha builds for Ricochet Refresh. We'll get to you in a minute. Uh, so Ricochet Refresh, the new alpha, has been updated to add support for V3 onion services. So this has all the previously mentioned advantages over V2 um, onion services. So once you create a you know, Ricochet uh, onion service, there should be no way to kind of go through all the onion services and enumerate, ah, yes, this is a Ricochet onion service. It's a Ricochet user. We should, we should pay attention to this node. Um, uh, as it's three V3, you get those nice super long V3 uh, Ricochet handles. Um, because the ricochet handle is basically just an onion address without the trailing dot onion and ricochet prepended. Um, it's not compatible with legacy ricochet um, because they're speaking two completely different um, languages, as it were. The, the protocols changed slightly, uh, made it a bit more secure um, from based off some feedback we got from the audit a while back. But on top of that, it just uses V3 onions, which V2 doesn't know, doesn't know how to talk to. Um, and as for using V3, it should be around for quite a long while, at least until V3 gets replicated, which, you know, hopefully there aren't any problems when you do that. Um, let's see. Speaking of feature set, we'll be adding a file transfer feature. Um, should be coming on our next beta build either in December or January 2021. Well, December 2020 or January 2021. Um, so you should be able to, you know, talk to one of your clients or talk to one of your contacts and initiate a file transfer. So you can send, you know, documents or cat pictures or whatever it is people send over to Messenger. Uh, we've made very good progress toward reproducible builds. 
Um, we started off by forking the Tor browser build system um, and ripping out almost all of it, uh, apart from like the build tool chains and everything they need to build Tor, um, and added in uh, configurations for building uh, Ricochet Refresh and all of its dependencies. Um, it's not yet reproducible, but the framework is there. We can at least uh, cross compile and uh, have a standardized build environment rather than needing to you know, mess around with that. Uh, we've made very good progress towards embeddability, especially this month. Um, so other applications should not have to reinvent private and messaging. If you want to add, you know, Ricochet support to, you know, Pigeon or something, it should be relatively easy to do that. Um, so there's been a good amount of work to get that um, working. Uh, Ricochet in its current form um, is basically a single monolithic uh, Qt application. So I've been working on kind of extracting out all the Tor management and the Ricochet protocol and all of that, sticking it in its nice own little um, standalone library, which is just currently called libtigo for, I don't know why it's called Tigo, um, but you know, you work with what you got. Um, so once all that is pulled apart and working, devs should just be able to basically import that library, um, use it with a nice little C API and build application on top of it. Um, and who knows what people can build on top of that. So yeah, alpha builds, we have them. Uh, we currently have built installers for Windows, which currently just installs a desktop, because why not? Uh, Linux x86 and x84 tar gzip archives and a DMG for Mac OS 10.3 up, 10.3 and up. Oh, yeah, that's not right. 10.13 and up, very different. Um, they can be found on ricochetrefresh.net. Uh, thanks. You can reach me. There's my email and my current vanity uh, Ricochet Refresh B3 handle. Um, you can find all the code of these various places. I've got the official repo and my current dev branches or dev uh, repos, as it were. Um, next up, we've got Maria uh, from Uni. Uh, 